A taste of heaven and hell. Prayers of the saints. The pipes and the telephones. I also saw a very huge pipe in heaven on which are connected many telephones. Every person has his or her telephone connected to this pipe. As I approached those telephones, and read the details concerning the owners of those phones, I saw that the entire history of these people is recorded on these phones. This history dates back to their great-grandparents, and everything they did and were supposed to do, as well as the reasons why they were born into this world. But I saw that many of these people died without fulfilling their divine purpose on earth. Everything is recorded in heaven, right from their whisper, and every word they uttered. They record everything, right from your great-grandparents, to your father, and then to yourself. They do the same thing on the side of your mother, right from your great-grandparents, to your mother, and then to yourself. They have the details of everything concerning them, the reasons why God placed them in their mother's wombs, everything they did up to the time of their death, and everything they were supposed to do, what they did and didn't do. This history stretches up to you, including the details of what you are supposed to do. But one thing that surprised me greatly is that when I examined these people's telephones, I discovered that many of them have never actually been used since they were established. And I saw that for every person's phone, there is an angel who is entrusted with taking care of that person and his phone. So every person has his phone in heaven, just like every person has a mouth. Just like you can't lend your mouth to someone, you can't give your phone or pipeline to someone. This means that in heaven, they expect every person to pray. And these heavenly phones capture each and every word you have ever spoken, every whisper you have ever uttered, and every thought you have ever entertained, right from the time you started having an understanding as a human being. But capturing such things was not the major purpose. Their major purpose of these phone lines is to act as mediums of prayer. But I saw that most of these phones are not used. And like I said, the phones capture each and everything, there was a lady on earth who thought of praying. Then in heaven, we heard her all around. We even saw where she was located on earth, and what she was doing at that particular time. Now, immediately this lady started praying. She started by thanking the Lord in wisdom, and God was pleased. This means that there is also an unwise way of praying that doesn't please God. This lady then worshipped the Lord, again in wisdom, and God was again pleased. This also means that there is an unwise way of worshipping, which doesn't please God. Now after worshipping God, everyone in heaven expected her to pray for something. And the whole of heaven was quiet, waiting for what this lady was going to say. God was also listening, from where he was. Jesus who was a bit far, drew nearer, listening attentively. But this lady instead of praying for something she needed, she drifted away slowly, saying, Lord you are Lord, you are Lord, you are good, you've given me life, and similar things. She continued saying, Lord you are great, you are almighty, you've done great things for me, you are the king of heaven, and things like that. She concluded by saying, you are Lord, indeed you are the Lord, there is none like you, there is none. Everyone was expecting her to pray for something that heaven could do for her, but she went on slowly saying, you are Lord, Lord, Lord. Pa, until the phone went off. All heaven was saddened because it is very rare in heaven to get a prayer prayed in wisdom and one that is able to reach heaven and get answered. It's a miracle. It's great when heaven gets such a prayer, and the angels of God rejoice. This means that many people's prayers don't actually reach heaven. That's why when any single person's prayer successfully reaches heaven, heaven rejoices. It's as if heaven has received a miracle, getting a prayer of wisdom, and one that reaches heaven. So we were expecting this lady to pray for something after her prayer had successfully made it to heaven. But she didn't, and God was saddened. Besides this lady, there was another man who also started praying by thanking God. Then he worshipped with wisdom and God was pleased. Then he prayed, and the angels received his prayer, through his telephone. They placed his prayer in a heavenly golden bowl. Then they took this prayer through what looked like offices, starting with the first office, then the second, and then the third. When they reached the last office, I saw them opening up a big drawer, which also had keys. Then they removed three things and mixed them in the bowls in which this man's prayer was. Then they picked a matchbox and lit a fire. But this fire is not like our fire here on earth. Thereafter, the contents of the bowls, the man's prayer and the three substances the angels had mixed in it were well fried. 
After they had done this, I saw that the man's prayer smelled so sweet. I wanted to follow up on the angel who was holding this golden bowl with this, roasted, prayer. Sweet smelling smoke was coming out of it. Then one of the senior angels held this bowl up in his hands and went somewhere, holding it. As he was doing it, smoke rose up from this bowl and went higher up to the throne of God Almighty. I saw that God was very pleased with this because the man had prayed well. Now, this is what praying and getting an answer from God means. And I saw that whenever God was pleased, the angels would pick things from the departments where heaven's goodies are kept. The angels are instructed to do this, even when God apparently says nothing to them. But the angels would still get the instructions and get things and bring them to the people whose prayers God had answered. I also saw that many people in the world don't pray. They simply order God to do what they want. It's like saying, Lord I need a car this year, this year won't end before I get it. I saw that such is not really a prayer, it's an order to God. But God being the kind father he is, when such a prayer reaches him, I saw that there is a way he overlooks everything and still grants the people their desires. I also saw that the prayers of many people go unanswered because such people set a time limit for God, and they don't pray according to his will. But God doesn't answer you according to your own will and timing. He answers you according to his own will and set time. For example, you might pray for a car in the year 2009, and God immediately grants your prayer. But he might determine that you will actually get hold of that car in 2011, in the month of March, on the date of 12th, at 12 o'clock, in such and such a place. That is to say, God does things according to his own timing, and everything of his is done according to his programming. For some people, he might determine that the car they have prayed for will be given to them as a donation from someone. And for others, he might determine that they will, earn, or work for it themselves through their sweat. But I saw that for some people, by the time God's prearranged time comes for them to get what they prayed for, such people have already left the places from where they were set to receive such things. They have moved from their positions. Others have already moved from their positions of faith and trusting God. I saw God's angels delivering things to the people, but the people don't know of it. They continue praying for the same things, which however God has already granted, and which his angels have already delivered. I saw the angels suffering from such things, looking or waiting for people to whom they want to deliver such things, but not seeing them. This is more so for unstable people, people who are not committed in faith. It's not that the angels don't know where exactly the recipients of these heavenly gifts are. They do, but in heaven, everything is done as it was ordered or arranged to be done. When you move away from your rightful position or God's will, you miss your blessing. I saw the angels carrying such gifts delaying a lot in certain places, while they are still waiting for the recipients to return to their rightful positions and give them such things. Finally, failing to see such people, the angels would go back to heaven with those things. On their way back to heaven, God's angels sometimes meet the devil's angels who fight them and steal these things. This means that when you pray, you need to take care. Your prayer might already have been answered and the things you prayed for already delivered. If this is the case, then it means Satan has stolen what God has already given you. In this case, you have the authority to fight Satan and recover what he has stolen from you. You have the power of God to recover anything the enemy has stolen from you. At other times, it is not that the devil has stolen what God has given you. But rather, it is that, the right time set by God for you to receive has not yet come. Many people complain that God doesn't answer their prayers. But when I was in heaven I saw that God answers the prayers of every person and every creature of whatever description on earth. And the time you starting praying or even thinking of what to pray for is the time it is granted to you. Even if you don't pray for that thing again, and you just wait on the Lord, as long as you are standing in your rightful position in God, you must get hold of it sooner or later. The problem of changing prayers. But I saw another problem with some people's prayers. They keep repeating themselves. In itself, it is not bad to pray many times and remind God, but if you prayed your prayer well and it reached heaven, going through the processes I have mentioned already, even if you pray that prayer again, the angels have already worked on it. They don't work on it again. They just listen to you as you pray, but they won't do anything new about it. They say, for that one, his issue is already settled. He is set to receive it in 2011.
You can remind heaven, but it changes nothing. The angels can do nothing about what is already granted and whose time is already set by God the provider. And I saw another problem. If you make even a slight change in your original prayer, this becomes a new prayer and cancels out the old prayer. It's okay to repeat your prayer, but if you make even a slight change in your old or previous prayer, it becomes a new prayer with a new schedule. For example, you might pray for a new car, and God says you will get it in the year 2010. If you pray for it again, make sure you pray in exactly the same way, as you did before. If you make some changes, it becomes a new prayer, and it cancels out the old prayer that had already been granted. Then the angels take your prayer afresh through the other processes I told you about, and the time you will get hold of it might be extended. Now some people end up not getting what they prayed for because by the time someone is about to receive what they prayed for, they make a new prayer all the time. That's how it is heaven. Everything you will ever need on earth is already in store in heaven. When you pray for something and it is granted by God, that's the very thing the angels prepare to deliver to you out of the store. If you change, it is cancelled. And I saw some people praying, but whose prayers were confusing to the angels of God. The angels would ask themselves, which of the two, what exactly does this person want? Let's wait, and see what exactly he really wants. Now the person prays again, but he prays for yet a different thing, like that and like that. I saw some other people who were aged 40 years, but since they started praying, they pray badly. Every day the angels say, let's give them another chance to pray rightly, but the people continue praying badly. In heaven, such prayers which are not properly made don't get through to God. The angels place them in some golden bowls, and they wait until the person prays in a better way. When you pray in a proper way, then this new prayer replaces the other bad prayers. Then the angels pour out your other bad prayers they had kept in a bowl. But if your prayer is as bad as the other you prayed before, they just add it to the other prayers and set it aside. So many people on earth pray but don't get the things they pray for due to reasons like that. Their prayers are not correctly prayed, and so they are just set aside. You need to pray properly and in wisdom. That's when your prayer will go through the channels already described, reaching God and getting you an answer. Improper prayers don't get answered, because in heaven everything is done perfectly. God is holy and holy. No imperfection can get anywhere near to Him. Whenever you see anything wrong or amiss in your life, then know that the problem or issue is not with God. It is with you. You need to check yourself. You need to do something properly. God is exceedingly holy. In Him, there is no imperfection. After seeing all this, I wondered why in heaven it looks like people are not praying at all, whereas here on earth people seem to be praying a lot. But again as said, in heaven, they don't ask questions. Everything is self-explanatory. So I understood where I had to go for the answer. So I moved on. I have earlier told you that when we were walking with Jesus, the doors in heaven would open themselves automatically for us, as we reached them. This time, however, it were the angels who opened the door for me and I entered. When I was inside, I looked down on earth, and I saw many pipes, which looked like pillars, and which I have already told you about. Every person on earth has their personal and exclusive pipeline, through which they are expected to get linked to heaven. When you pray, your prayer just doesn't travel through the air anyhow. Rather it gets into this pipeline and then it is channeled through to heaven. These pipelines end somewhere near heaven, they don't directly run into heaven. But there is something I saw here. Exactly where these pipes end, I saw mafia-like men, the fierce angels of Satan. These are murderous, strong demonic spirits that are armed with all kinds of weapons. These satanic angels hate what is called a human being, and their mission is to ensure that no man's or woman's prayer passes through to heaven. And I saw that these satanic angels are very effective in their work. I saw that most people's prayers don't cross this point. This means that heaven doesn't get their prayers, because these satanic angels crush them to ashes. Weak and strong prayers. Another thing that I saw regarding some people's pipes is that even when these evil forces don't interfere with their prayers, the prayers of these people are themselves already so weak that they just disappear around this place, without getting to heaven. I saw other prayers, and these prayers looked strong but they kept bouncing back, in and out of these pipelines. Which means such prayers were not direct. 
For a prayer to effectively go through the pipeline, it must be as direct and as strong as an iron bar. I mean spiritually. Satan's angels are not bothered about weak prayers. Such prayers just evaporate or disappear by themselves. Then I saw some people who were praying very strong prayers. And the devils were struggling and fighting with those prayers to see that they are destroyed. Some of such prayers would get destroyed, while others would fight their way through. Then I asked myself, who can survive these evil men? Who on earth can get past these evil forces? And this question too answered itself to me. A person whose prayer gets past these evil forces must stand in the principles of prayer. Not every person who prays is a prayer warrior. In heaven, the people they know as prayer warriors adopt certain principles. The first principle is praying in spirit and in truth. The second principle is praying in faith and in wisdom. The third is praying in power and in holiness. By power, I don't mean in the energy of the flesh, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. If a person abides by these principles, these evil forces can't manage his prayer. This is because as soon as this person's prayer gets out of his mouth or heart to enter his pipe that leads to heaven, such a prayer is as hot as fire. These evil forces feel the heat of this prayer from a very long distance, which burns them and forces them to withdraw backward, shouting, hot, hot, hot. The devils go very far, and wait until that person's pipe has cooled down. These are what they call prayer warriors. So you have to ensure that your prayer is thus powerful if it is to get past these evil forces, and through the phone system. It's equally important that you pray in wisdom and properly before God. Another thing I saw at this place of the pipes is that there are prayers which these evil forces aren't even bothered to stop. When such prayers come through the pipelines, these spirits just withdraw a little away, lean nearby, and are very happy with such prayers. What types of prayers are these? These are the prayers of people who pray while cursing. Now, these angels of Satan are excited about people who pray like that because they are partners with them. Such prayers don't go beyond this point. The angels of Satan themselves come down and implement what those people are praying for. This also means that when you are not standing properly in the Lord, someone can pray such prayers against you and these angels of Satan can harm you on that person's behalf. So you have to be a person of prayer because even in the church there are people who curse or pray like that. You need to pray in power and faith. And walking in holiness is what deprives these evil forces of the right to attack you, based on someone else's cursing prayers. Walking upright with the Lord is also what protects you against the machinations of evil people witches, etc., because then, the angels of God are on your side to fight for you. It's particularly important to stand in the word of God. Then the angels of God will defend you. And I saw many people who pray a lot, some even spend nights praying on prayer mountains, but when these people are not standing in God's word. Such people are not connected to heaven, and so heaven can't help them in their problems. A lot was revealed to me in heaven about prayer, but let me stop here for now, for there is a lot on prayer.